Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Skolich and Kelly Maynard with another Lipedema Light Bites, bite-sized information about lipedema. Today we're going to be talking more about conservative therapies. Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm Kelly Maynard with Wild Heart Wellness and we're so excited to talk about some of these conservative methods for helping your lipedema. All right. So conservative therapies, uh, we're talking about non-surgical methods for all stages and all types. Uh, we do wanna talk a little bit about, um, realize please that we're not medical professionals. We're just telling you about some of the therapies that we have used ourselves and also some of the therapies that we've read about through the research that's been published recently. So always go to your medical professional, your specialist for lipedema, uh, for their recommendations specifically for you. We're just really talking in general about a lot of those therapies that are out there for managing lipedema. Right. And a few benefits of conservative therapies are improved quality of life, decreased pain, increased mobility, improve and reduce that fibrotic tissue. Right. So some of those non-scale victories that we've been talking about in some right. of the previous videos as well. So we want to talk a little bit about the Quadrivus study. Um, and so Quadrivus is a method um, of a full body a deep tissue massage that was developed in the Netherlands. Um, and I know that a lot of times I read, oh, well, this therapy isn't available near me. Well, yeah, it's not. It's in the <laughs> Netherlands, right? So and apparently it's only available in a very small part of the Netherlands as well. <laughs> but the point of it is that Karen Herbst did a small study of 12 sessions of treatment with a small number of patients of this full body deep tissue massage therapy and found improvements. That's awesome, awesome yeah. news. Because before this, we had always heard you always want a light touch, that light MLD type touch, dry brushing, where you're only just brushing the skin because you don't want to disturb the lymph nodes. You don't want to damage them more. Well, this quadrivus study is showing us that we can go deeper into our tissues and really that we need to go deeper into our tissues mm -hmm. to break down that fibrotic tissue. So it's not moving the lymph, it's reducing that fibrotic tissue. True. And I, I've watched Dr. Herb's presentation before, but in preparation for our little discussion today, I went back and watched it again. And I w was reminded that every measure that they took, um, and they did ultrasounds, and they, they even did some MRIs. They did all kinds of different wow. ways to assess the lipedema tissue in these women. And there were significant improvements in pain levels, caliper measurements, and calipers are those little tools that pinch your fat, a little plastic tool. Um, mm -hmm. So there was improvement in caliper measurements, leg circumference at various points down the leg from the upper thigh all the way down to the ankle. They had improvement in leg function and in the lipedema tissue, the nodules, the thickness, and the fibrosis. And Dr. Herbst even said the only area that these women did not improve in this study was their hand fat did not improve. But she also said lipedema is not supposed to affect your hands. So right. it should not have changed. So that's, I thought that was so interesting. There's so much promise with doing deep tissue therapies. And Dr. Herbst has talked about almost all of the ones that we're going to cover today. Great. So a little bit more about the Quadra study. The study led to increased interest in utilization of the deeper tissue therapies for treatment and management of lipedema. Um, so, so a lot of the treatments that we're going to be talking about today are those deep tissue therapies. Right. So not necessarily quadrivus, but other tissue uh, therapies that are available to you. Yes. And the quadrivus, the reason this is a significant study is because it led to us having greater understanding of the benefits of this type of deep, deeper tissue therapy. Um, 
the quadrivus is still really only in the Netherlands. They have it at this one clinic in the Netherlands. And Dr. Herbst did bring over um, a therapist from that clinic in the Netherlands to do her study. But as of right now, we can't really get that in the US and probably if you're in another country, you probably can't get it there either, unless you happen to be in the Netherlands and are on their very, very long wait list to go to their clinic to get the therapy done. Um, these, tissue, these therapies are often referred to as myofascia release therapies or connective tissue therapies. Yep. And I wanted to mention, um, we do have a lady in our group who, um, she and her son watched some of the quadrivus uh, uh, videos and her son is duplicating that type of technique. So just by watching the video, they're, they're uh, trying to work on uh, that technique and, and trying to use it. So they didn't have really formal training, but you know, just through the video, they're trying to, to do that. So you know, that's a possibility too. If you have someone willing, then that's pretty cool. Uh, so one thing to note is that these therapies can be very, very painful, especially at first. They can cause bruising, they can cause discolorations of the skin. So if you try it once and you go, oh my God, that was a killer. It, try to lighten up your touch. Try to, you know, it, if, it, if you can only bear one second, the next day try to go two seconds. The next day try to go five seconds. It just try to keep at it. I know it's painful. Um, for myself, it will probably be talking about cupping a little bit later, um, but uh, the therapy that I used was called cupping. And uh, my therapist uh, attached the cupping to a, um, a variable pump. And he didn't realize just how painful these things are for us. And when I went back the, for the second treatment, I don't know why I would have after all of that pain, he saw the bruises on me and he went, I shouldn't have bruised you. Why didn't you tell me that this was painful? And I went, I thought it was supposed to be. No, I didn't know. Right. Yeah. Um, and so he turned the pump all the way down, all the way down, just because they, it, these therapists don't realize just how painful yeah. it is for us. So please be sure to tell them it is painful so that they can adjust and eventually you'll be able to get back to the normal person's setting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, myofascia therapies can bring surprisingly rapid results and or surprisingly rapid res um, improvements. And just to yeah. comment on a little bit more about what you said, I did some therapies that were extremely painful, very painful. And I was shocked because I went back for a second session of torment as well. And yes. I was surprised to find that my pain was cut about in half, even just after one session. Yeah. And that's not always the case, but there's so much inflammation. There's so much fibrotic tissue and just getting some of that moving can quickly change how painful some of the therapies are. Yep. Very, very true. Some of the most common therapies of this type are that deep tissue Swedish, uh, Swedish massage. Oh, that's a tongue twister. I didn't realize how <laughs> difficult that was. Uh, gua Sha and Graston. They're very similar using tools to uh, use on the skin. The cupping that I mentioned, fascia blasting. There's a lot of talk about the fascia blaster. It, a particular uh, type of tool um, and foam rollers. So these are a lot of the different types of things that you can do to get deep into the tissues. Right. So we'll start with the deep tissue Swedish massage and I added trigger point on here because that comes up a lot and a lot of people don't exactly understand what that is. So we'll go over this just a little bit. Um, the deep tissue and Swedish massage are similar in techniques and strokes. The Swedish massage is more calming, more gentle for overall treatment and relaxation to reduce tension, increase circulation, and release toxins from muscles. So that therapy is not specifically intended to dig into the tissues 
and treat specific problems within the tissues. But any type of massage is gonna have a lot of benefit. And switch massage does have like a medium sort of pressure. So it is gonna be deeper than say like a manual lymphatic drainage that barely has any type of pressure on the skin at all, but it's not gonna be as deep or with the same intention as deep tissue massage. And that deep tissue massage is deeper. It, it's more forceful, it has more of a pressure to it, um, and, and it gets down and, and gets to those adhesions. Um, we, I think we mentioned every now and then a little bit about the adhesions, but that fibrotic tissue can adhere the skin to the muscles underneath. Um, and it, it's very difficult to break that apart. They're not supposed to be adhered together like that. Um, and so you might see little divots on your skin where you have that um, adhesion. Um, and so this deep tissue massage might be able to uh, work on that adhesion to break it apart so that your tissue is more supple and able to move easier. Um, deep tissue massage will help with injuries, um, pain that's in your connective tissues. Um, it's not normally relaxing, but it's still gonna have some of those benefits of increased circulation, releasing toxins from the muscles. And if you've uh, heard some of our talks uh, earlier as well, every now and then we talk about how our system is very, having a very difficult time getting some of those toxins out of our system. It's trapped in our um, fibrotic fat cells. Um, those fat cells aren't able to get those toxins into our lymph system and to get it out. Um, so anything that we can do to try to release those toxins and get it flowing out of our system is a great, great thing. It is. And some of the adhesions as well, they can even be your connective tissue sticking to itself and mm -hmm. forming a little knot. Um, because connective tissue covers, there's a layer between your skin and the fat, and then there, it covers your muscles. It covers, there's connective tissue surrounding everything in your body. And so, that is supposed to be a, like it's supposed to slide against each other. Whatever it's covering, if it's covering your muscle, if it's up against your skin, if it's covering your fat, it's all supposed to, when you move, when you flex your muscles, when you walk, when you do all these things, that connective tissue is supposed to slide. And whenever there's some sort of adhesion, it means it's like in a knot right there. And so it can't slide. When it tries to slide, it just gets stuck. And that's, what causes you pain and why you, you know, can't have a full range of motion as you used to, or why um, those methods where they work those adhesions, they free up that fluid where it can flow again and free up that connective tissue where it slides against each other instead of hitting a roadblock when you're trying to move. So those are really important. And the last I forgot where we are on the slide. Oh, trigger point techniques. These are different yep. from the massage a little bit because they do focus on sore areas in the muscles. If you have a knot in your muscle, that is a connective tissue knot. It's not really that your muscle is tensed up. It's that the connective tissue around your muscle is not allowing any movement there and it's in like it can be like a little wad of connective tissue and that's what a trigger point is so they can use pressure with the hands or tools to release those and they will ask you to breathe deeply to breathe through that so they can work on it it hurts i had this done it hurts it works though it does work um so when those constrictions in your muscles are released there's a release of toxins and the tension decreases it can be very uncomfortable but it can also give pain relief quickly because once you release that little area there isn't pain there anymore and then the inflammation decreases the toxins move out and you can be surprised how quickly something that's been painful for a while won't be painful anymore okay so 
ISTM stands for Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Massage. Okay, um, and so uh, this is a, uh, a a type of massage where you're using some type of instrument. Um, and so some of the common ones are gua sha and Graston techniques. Um, and so they use different types of implements and we'll have a couple pictures of those in later slides. Uh, so these techniques are gonna be using those tools to address the adhesions or that fibrosis that's in your tissues. Um, and so by using uh, these to kind of scrape on the skin um, to work on those specific adhesions um, will uh, help to um, uh, heal and break down some of that fibrotic tissue. Okay, so their gua sha and Graston are similar in that they use tools and scraping motions on the skin. But gua sha has tools that are made of these various different materials, stone, jade, horn, ceramic. Um, they've even used like spoons in some mm -hmm. instances in Chinese medicine. Yep. Um, the strokes that they use are closely repeated in time and space in one direction along a muscle. Um, and it presses into the fascia, the connective tissue. The focus of gua sha is to release the toxins and warm up the area to move lymph and increase circulation. So the technique is gonna be, like if this was the instrument, it's gonna be into the muscle like this, deep, deeper than that but they won't go back and forth like this. It'll be along the line of whatever muscle they're working on. And there are some handy gua sha tools. There are, there's such a variety of gua sha tools. They are odd shapes and made out of all different things. Kind of cool. And here's some of the Graston tools. Uh, they're similarly, it, they're usually um, a, a stainless type of tool. Right. Um, let's see, they're yeah, made from stainless. Um, they're used to press deeper into the tissues and they use a rhythmic stroke um, in those areas where there's tightness, a limited range of motion. Um, so where those adhesions are, they'll be using these tools to try to scrape along similarly to the gua sha to uh, try to release uh, release those. Okay, ASTEM is a specific type of therapy, relatively new, that was developed. It's very similar to the Gua Sha and Graston, but it uses a plastic tool. And um, they say that their method encourages healing along the whole chain of tissue that's damaged and helps regenerate tissue. And it, their focus is just a little bit different um, than Gua Sha or Graston, but you can see the plastic tools at the bottom. And if you're gonna go see an ASTEM therapist, there is a specific training that these ASTEM therapists go through and they can't advertise that they're ASTEM therapists unless they have been certified through this specific um, program, just to let you know. Um, have you tried this particular technique yet? I haven't, or heard of I anyone? haven't done ASTEM. Um, yeah. It's not, I think that a lot of therapists will use some sort of combination. Of, yeah. They're not like wholly, Gua Sha, Holy Graston, or Holy ACM. Although it's my understanding that if you go to a physical therapy clinic that says they offer ACM, they do just the ACM techniques. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, if that's what they offer. But in my experience, and from what I've talked to other people, if you go to a Chinese Gua Sha practitioner, they will do, you know, Gua Sha. But if you're gonna just go to someone who has experience in different techniques, they may have some stainless steel tools and do some of those things. They may have some of the gua sha tools and do some of those techniques. Um, the therapist that I went to used whatever was needed in that area. And so um, it seems like if they're trained in different techniques, they can more assess 
exactly what's going on with that individual's body, what do they need, and um, utilize the techniques better. But again, everybody's different. What works for one person may not work for the other. And I think what's important is that you figure out if some of these therapies are going to help you. And I think both of us have used these types of tools, even in a home setting, and right. had good results with breaking down fibrotic tissue and helping with pain and those types of things. So I think people need to just not be scared to jump in and try something sometimes. Yeah. And that was one thing I was going to mention uh, that some of these tools you can purchase and have at home. So if you are having trouble finding a therapist in your area, um, there is always that possibility as well to uh, get some of these tools and, and try them out in, in your home setting. Yeah. And we don't advise, you know, doing anything without doing some research, without mm -hmm. educating yourself. But Dr. Herb spoke to this recently because a lot of people are having trouble with this whole COVID thing of getting mm -hmm. in-person appointments. And her advice was, you don't have to wait. You know, you need to be smart about it. You need to educate yourself. You need to look into what exactly you need to be doing. But her advice is to do something for yourself. You can do some of these things in your own home. Yep, very true. This one's my favorite cupping. Um, it, for me, this really just changed my life. So I was able to find a cupping therapist in uh, my town um, and uh, it, it was really amazing. Uh, I believe it was within six weeks, um, it, my tissues really changed quite a bit. Um, so cupping is used to help with pain, blood flow as a type of deep tissue massage, uh, inflammation and relaxation and well-being. Um, you know, so the general pop population out there, they're really using it for relaxation and well-being, right? Um, but for us, it is just wonderful to help uh, move that lymph fluid and uh, get it moving. Um, it use the, uses these little cups, and there's a number of different types of cups that can be used. They can be plastic, they can be glass, they can be silicon. Um, there's different types of sets. There's uh, different methods of this. Um, and we'll have some pictures of some of the different types in uh, yeah, the next slide. Um, but what happens is uh, there's suction that occurs within that cup and it pulls up on the skin. We we're talking a little bit about adhesions. And one of the really cool things, I think, is you can actually see where the adhesion occurs underneath the skin because you'll have a little dome of skin underneath the cup especially with the plastic clear ones or the glass ones, right? You'll be able to see the skin dome underneath it. And if there's an adhesion, you're going to see where that dip is in, in, uh, in the skin and it won't have that nice smooth dome to it. It's kind of interesting. Um, so the cup uses that suction to tug at the muscles and the skin and tissues and it tugs it upwards instead of exerting pressure downward on your body parts. Um, where that massage is usually occurring, where you're going down and instead is pulling up. Um, so it's kind of pulling on that fascia in the muscles to uh, break up that scar tissue and move that outward. Um, it's great at getting rid of stagnant fluids and pathogens, promotes fresh oxygenated nutrient rich blood and lymph. Um, it helps to get your uh, blood flow to the surface of your skin and that's one of the reasons that a lot of us have that cold feeling to our skin in a lot of our lipedema areas. We're not getting that blood flow to the skin. And so this uh, is a method that can really help with that. It really can. And um, another way to figure out where some adhesions are is there's a method of cupping that is gliding where you slide it along your skin. And if you run into a fibrotic tissue area, that cup will just pop off your skin. You will not be able to glide it over that area. And that was a problem for me when I started because it was popping off like I'd put it on and move it and it would pop off over and <laughs> over and it was very frustrating. But um, that means that that's an area that needs to have some more attention from you. 
and here's a whole bunch of different types of cupping sets. Um, you can see some of the uh, silicon, some of the glass and plastic type cups. Um, you can see on the, let's see, that would be your right hand side with the little red balls on the top. Um, so that's uh, a little um, a stiff cup on the bottom and then they'll use the red rubber ball. Uh, they'll squeeze it before they place it on the skin and then release it to bring that skin into the cup and have that suction in there. Um, so a lot of different methods there. Um, Looks like some ancient cups too that we probably won't see. Yes, exactly. Yeah, some pretty cool old oh, ones well, in there. Let me go back real quick. Oh, yes. that's, oh my goodness, I went way... <laughs> I'm just trying to get to the cupping. Okay. <laughs> this isn't what I wanted, but I'm going to stay here because I might get to the wrong page. Um, <laughs> and now I have no idea what's going to say. Oh, I did want to say this. A lot of women ask us in the group about cupping, and both of us have done it. One thing I do want to say is there are different, a lot of different methods. We do not recommend at all that you do wet cupping at home. Wet cupping does not mean that you put oil on your skin to better glide the cups. You do need to use oil if you're gonna glide the cups. Wet cupping is a method in Chinese medicine where they actually draw blood. Yeah. So we Good are not point. talking about wet cupping, especially if you're gonna do it at your house. Right. So even if you're using oil, it's called dry cupping because wet cupping it has to do with pricking the skin to draw blood so very important distinction um between methods of cupping um if you're going to look this up you would need to look up dry cupping to use the silicone ones or the ones like you can buy them on amazon um mm -hmm. but we don't I want to link in the I have a link in the group to a set of plastic ones that has a little manual pump with it. Um, so you can use that type. Um, I have that set at home. Um, now, originally when, it, so if you are in our group and you search for it, you might see some places where I was not a fan of some of the silicone cuts early on. Um, and part of the reason for that is because with my experience using that variable pump, I was just such a huge fan of when he turned that variable pump all the way down. He yeah. was able to just have it consistent all the time with the same amount of uh, pull on it so that he was able to reduce the amount of pain. And so many of us have such pain at the beginning. I was just really, really nervous about offering or suggesting the silicone cuts because it just can be so variable because you're just squeezing the cup and putting it on your skin. And you know, that, can be quite a bit of pull on it. Yeah, it um, but since then, I've spoken with Kelly and some other people who have used that type of cup as well. Um, and, uh, you know, there's methods of using that as well, even if you do have a high amount of pain at the beginning. Um, you know, you just leave it on for one second. You don't squeeze it quite as hard um, when you're putting it on the skin. So there are some things um, that you can do. And uh, it, so you, you can make, uh, I do feel now, um, almost any of those types of cups to work for you, even yeah. in a home setting. And to lessen the pain on any of these methods, we haven't really talked about this. It's not part of what we're doing, but it can be really painful if you will use these deep, deep tissue methods after your skin is warm. So maybe after you take a walk or after you get out of a shower or anything where you're warming your tissue more, even after dry brushing, if you're in the shower you get out and you just scrub off with a towel where you're making your blood circulation higher, it will make these methods a little bit less painful. Yep. And, That's a great point. And that will help quite a bit. Yep. Okay, there we are. Okay, so flash, uh, fascia blasting. Um, and so fascia blasting is a tool that was created for use for professional athletes. Um, and there's a couple of Facebook groups that, who are dedicated to lipedema and fascia blasting. So those are really awesome places to go to. Um, but 
this tool is able to get down to the, those adhesions that are fibrotic at, down in the fascia, okay? And so it's able to get down into those layers to restore healthy tissue and to decrease pain. Yes, and one thing that I've liked about the Fascia Blaster is it comes in different sizes. And so if you use one that's got smaller little prongs on it, it's gentler. And the other thing that I've liked about it is you can really control how much pressure you're putting on your skin. When I first started using it, I would set it on my skin and kind of like manual lymphatic drainage, that much pressure, like not even indent my skin at all. And it hurt a lot. Um, but you're completely able to control how much you're digging into your skin, how much pressure you're using. And it really does help you go layer by layer. You can do the out, you know, the top layer first and then work down as you go. And so that is a benefit of a tool like this. Many of the videos that you will see with this fascia blasting are not lipedema women and they are really, really being rough with their bodies with this tool. Just putting a ton of pressure, like as much muscle power as they can. So we need to be careful with some of these tools, thinking that we are professional athletes and we can just start out going, you know, 30 minutes of really hard therapy. We need to go at our own pace. However, a study indicated that with consistent use over time, the collagen that makes up connective tissue was regrowing, inflammation decreased, and the appearance of dimpled skin improved. That indicates that the tissues underneath the skin are becoming healthier, and there aren't those adhesions pulling the skin down in those little pockets. Yep. Uh, when I first got the fascia blaster, um, uh, I didn't have very much stamina at that time. And so it, it was very difficult for me to uh, use that tool for any length of time. Um, so I, I do want to also just maybe mention that, that um, if you don't have a lot of stamina to really move that back and forth on your skin for an extended amount of time, perhaps this might not be a good tool for you to start with. Maybe some of the other tools that we're talking with uh, talking about might be a little bit better. Um, I, and I just wanted to mention that because I, I know that, you know, even these, though these tools are outrageously expensive, except for shipping to some places with the fashion mm. blaster, I understand is kind of pricey. Um, but, you know, it, buying all of these things can add up over time. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I, you know, might suggest that perhaps you try one of the other tools uh, before moving on to this one. Just my personal opinion. So, yeah. There you go. Um, and the other thing is they've come out, it's not on this picture, they've come out with a tool that's about, I have one, it's about this big and um, it is a lot easier for me to use because um, it's not heavy mm -hmm. and I honestly do not follow the protocol of the fascia blaster people because it just didn't work for me. I can't do five minutes per arm or right. I'm not, yes. I don't know if that's the exact <laughs> protocol. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but I have only used the fascia blaster at the end of my shower in the shower. And I do my whole self in about five minutes because I had the same issue with the, yeah. the stamina. Yep. I just, I can't do all that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, foam rollers. Um, so with foam rollers, you're gonna use your body weight against a dense foam roller. Um, and, and so I've used it in particular on my back. And so I'll start kind of underneath my hips and roll forward on uh, the roller so that it comes up my back. Um, and so it's using your body weight um, so that that foam roller kind of gets into the tissue to help reduce the muscle soreness, stiffness, inflammation. Um, it'll, over time, also help with increasing your range of motion as well. Right. Women with lipedema have reported softening of fibrotic tissue with the use of foam rollers. And this is one of the tools that I use that I thought I was going to die when I used it. <laughs> I was... Uh, I was in the office. My fashion specialist was there. 
And he said, okay, you're going to roll on this foam roller on your thighs for one minute, one. And I cried and it hurt. And I was like, how does this hurt so much? It hurts so bad. But I've used it on the hip area. I've even used it up my sides to break up some of that. On the back, it's really relaxing. The thing that I like about foam rollers is also if you can't get on the floor, you can actually put them on a wall and lean your body weight into it. And nice. so even women who might have mobility issues where they can't get on the floor to use a foam roller, you can modify how you're using it. Um, and in spite of all that pain, I have to tell the whole story. In spite of all that pain, I had chunks of fibrotic tissue in my legs that I could feel. It was almost like a speed bump. Like I could go down my leg and then hit it and it would be a little bump in my leg. And after that really painful experience, one of those was completely gone. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. It was I was amazed it hurt. It really hurt. <laughs> um, <laughs> so fair warning, it can really hurt. Um, but with the foam rollers, again, you can, you don't have to use all of your body weight. It's really controlled by you. I didn't know that in that first session. I was just, it was bad. But it, you can adjust how much body weight you put onto the foam roller. And it really is a versatile type of tool where you can use it on pretty much any part of your body. How big is the uh, foam roller that you use? It, what's about the diameter? It's about, about that big. Yeah, yeah. It, I was thinking uh, mine's maybe like eight inches diameter. I'm thinking I think mine's about, a little bit smaller. But a little smaller. Mm -hmm, I got it really cheap. Those are we had on the picture, it showed all different various kinds. I just yeah. have a smooth, dense foam roller. It doesn't have all the bumps or any of the other things on it. And mm -hmm. I got it on Amazon for really cheap, like less than $20. Yeah. The one that I found uh, does have some of the bumps on it. Uh, we have a store here called Five Below. And so mm -hmm. it was a $5 foam roller. And so I bought it, didn't use it forever. And uh, it just a, a couple months ago, I started going, hmm, what can I use this for? And so I started trying it. So, there are tons of videos yeah. about foam rollers. So anybody who's interested in that, um, lots of videos. They will be probably athletes and really fit people. So don't get discouraged when you look. But they do show you some really good techniques and how to use them for different parts of your body. Awesome. All right. Well, in conclusion... Manual therapies like those we've discussed here are used by many women who have lipedema. We're two women who have used a lot of them. So uh, come ask us questions about them. Uh, finding the right combination of deep tissue therapies to use and the frequency is very, very individualized. Um, it, I'm telling you, Kelly and I don't use these the same way. We've used a lot of them, but we do not use them in the same manner. So, you know, it, you find what works for you, okay? With the right information and research, the techniques can be used at home to help women with lipedema improve their quality of life and impact their disease. So we really want to, with these videos, empower women to go figure out some ways to help themselves. We all yep. know that most doctors don't know about this disease. We yep. all know that our family and friends don't know about this disease. <laughs> and so we are trying to put some information out there. So maybe something will seem to you like something you can do for yourself. Like you'll say, oh, you know what? That's a therapy I think I could do. And anything you do to help yourself is more than you were doing before. So think about all the therapies. Go Google and watch some videos on YouTube and see what feels right to you. Because whatever seems right to you is what you might stick with and be consistent with. And that is just as important as the therapy itself. And as always, for more information, come join me at lipedemadiva.com. And my website is wildheart.health and email is info at wildheart.health. 
We also have two great Facebook groups for you. We have one for patients, which is lipedema and food sensitivities, take control of your lipedema. And for our health and wellness providers at lipedema and food sensitivities healthcare community. Hope to see you there and see you next time on lipedema light bites. Bye.